Hi guys and welcome back to Extreme Garage with me, Lawrence. Apologies for all the same problems I've been having. Hopefully now with the mics situation sorted, we've got better sound quality going forward. Today we're going to look at what you need to own your own fire engine, as well as permission from the wife. So we'll do this back at Extreme Garage HQ. <laughs> So you've made that huge decision. You've decided, you know what? I need a fire engine. And the wife's let you, or you're probably not gonna tell her. So you're gonna to wanna to know what you need to actually own one of these and what you're gonna to need to stay legal while owning one. So first of all, the biggest one is having the correct license. So because in this particular model, this one is it's a 13 ton gross weight, uh, net weight. So as it stands now with no water in it, it's eight ton which would put it in the uh, class two HGV uh, license bracket. So you would require a class C license. And grandfather rights with the, the old seven and a half ton lorries, that, that won't apply to this. Even if you had your license before 1st of January, 1997, and you can drive seven and a half ton lorries, you won't be able to drive one of these because it's obviously over the over seven and a half ton weight limit. That's the first hurdle. So with the insurance, uh, it comes at a very reasonable price. I'm going to cover all the costs, uh, again, the running costs and what you need uh, financially to keep one of these going. We'll cover that in another episode soon. But for now, we just want to cover what you're going to need just to get one of these and get it on the road and be legal by owning one as well. So now you've got the correct license to be able to physically drive one of these. Now it's the other aspects. So first of all, it's the MOT. Uh, if you maintain it as a fire engine, and I mean maintain it, which means uh, ideally keeping yourself a little logbook on what jobs you've done on it, what work you've done on it, uh, it is MOT exempt. You have to fill in a, a one page document, sign it and date it, and then it can be exempt from MOT. So when you go and tax it, you give them this document with it and you get your tax and your MOT sort of together. You don't get any actual MOT paperwork, but you just get this form that says it is MOT exempt. You must maintain it as a fire engine. That, that, that is the key part of it here. So you know how hard the guys in the fire stations work to keep these things on the road 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You need to basically treat them as if they were still like that and still capable of putting out a fire. And that's the, and that's the next point as well. Is it able to put out a fire at any moment that you're in this? Could you could you put out a fire in it? That is what a fire engine is. It's something to put out fires. If you can't do it as that, or if you're buying your fire engine and you're deciding to rip out the tank and the pump and turn it into some magnificent bar or a, a limo, you are going to have to abide by the rules. You're going to have to abide by the rules to that particular vehicle that you're aiming towards so if you were using it as a bar you need a heavy goods vehicle test an mot test so you'll have to go and get one of those done uh, if you were doing it as a limo you're going to have to be treated as a higher for a reward vehicle which would means go for a full mot and you're going to have to abide by the different insurance regarding that so that's one thing. So, so when you're taxing your vehicle, you've got your V5 document on it. It'll just say the, the, the name, the model, and it'll just say fire engine and red. It's quite cool to look at. I would show you mine, but uh, I don't know where I put it. When you're taxing it, it is literally go to the post office, ask them to tax the vehicle, just like you would your car, and just say it is exempt from tax. 
because it is a fire engine and they will just produce you the tax. So you have to tax it. It's just that the tax amount is zero. It's a null tax amount. So you must go and physically tax it at the post office and you must physically sign this MOT exemption form and give it to them. And then it will show up on the DVLA website that it is taxed. Although it is MOT exempt, I strongly advise that you still treat it and go and get it MOT'd, but without the documents at the end. So with this one, in this case here, I had it brake tested. So I know I'm gonna be safe on the road. Somebody went around it all and treated it uh, as if it was going through an MOT and it all came back good. Also, which is what I've done as well, carry a set of bulbs for everything in here as well, because the bulbs, uh, the, the bits all over the place, one way some of the work, and there's that many different bulbs inside there. You need to keep, keep them all, keep a set of them all with you, just in case you need to change one when you're out and about. If you've already got your heavy goods license anyway, you will be doing the daily checks of your vehicle when you started work, uh, and you keep a log in there of what maintenance was done anyway. So bring that along with with this vehicle as well. Even though it's going to be owned by yourself, still treat it as if it was something that you were using daily. Do your daily checks, check your tires, check your tire pressures, check that all your bulbs working. There's even a handy bulb in the, on the dash to press, just like in other vehicles where you press the bulb test and it shines all the bulbs up. And if one of them's out, just change it. It's dead simple. So keep it roadworthy, keep it safe. If you're keeping it locked away for two, three years, still, when you're going to take it out, it's best to do a thorough check all the way over, take it to a local garage mechanics, ask them to do a full little check over, have a brake test done on it. It's, not, it's going to take a few hours out of your day, but you're going to save your own life as well as other people's lives in the process because these are heavy pieces of equipment and they can be dangerous if you mistreat them. I was looking through the paperwork the other day of the vehicle and uh, going back to the keeping your own little logbook and stuff, I've actually got this vehicle's appliance logbook from Staffordshire. In it, it states every, it, it's got documented every time they went out. Uh, I can't show you close up only because of, I can show you that side. It's only because it's got people's names on there and I don't want to, and it's got their badge numbers. So I don't know. I don't want to share that with you, but it's got the mileage it's done uh, and how much fuel was used. Uh, but there's some really interesting ones here that uh, caught my eye when I was looking through it on the, is it the second, third page in? Uh, fire. There's the, on this page here, there was a fire, and this was from 2013. Every time they went out for a fire, it's logged in the book here, and the mileage it done after the fire, and how many hours the pump was running for. I mean, this per particular one here, which was, it's a place I've been to up the road, there was a fire. Uh, oh, the 25th of January, 2013, so a month after Christmas. Uh, that, seven miles it did to that one. That's a long run, that is. This one here, yeah, at, uh, at a farm up the road, 17, 17 miles. That's quite fascinating. Pointless for me to tell you about this, but I just thought it was quite cool. Uh, a lot of whatever A plus, so the root A plus B, CFS. So some, okay. In here, there's some acronyms that are used for the routine. The, the fire one, I can understand fire as being that we attended a fire. Now, the other ones on here, I've got CFS. I've got an A, fuel. A plus F, SSC, A, refuel. So if anybody knows what those acronyms are, it would be quite interesting to, to understand them. So, so if you can drop a note down in the comments, that'd be perfect. There's one particular guy, that's, his name keeps on cropping up in here. I wonder if he'd like to see his old lorry that he used to drive you. Before I put these down, you know, it, it, we, we all the, the the jobs and the things that are done in this vehicle here. It, it does, it does make you appreciate and understand what these 
it, pieces of equipment have actually done. It is just a piece of metal, but this, this block of metal has probably saved a lot of lives. It's done a lot of good things for a lot of good people uh, in its local community. And, and you've got to take your hat off to the guys that use them every day. It's, they're hard to use, as I found out myself, and they are quite exhausting to use. So, you know, I'm sure everyone else can appreciate their work they do uh, for us all here. So if you like the video, don't forget to smash the thumbs up button. And if you haven't already, please go and subscribe and click the bell notification icon so you get notified every time I upload. And I'll see you again soon.